Hey, how we doing, YouTube? My name's Obi, and I am a former, former Division One athlete who is now a software developer. I have been a software developer for full time since May of 2022, so about set roughly seven months. Made a whole lot of progress. Uh, it's this past year and a half has been crazy, man. I went from from playing at Oklahoma to now being a software developer, and it's. It's, it's crazy when I think back to it. I was that kid who was, man, I was all about ball, all about sports, trying to get to the league. Unfortunately, some injuries happened, lost love for the game, but here I am, happy as ever, and just continuing to to strive and just 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 build things and and just create things and just make my imprint and just just keep just keep climbing to the top. I want to create a bunch of a. Uh, some videos, just super, super blank videos or super like beginner videos of kind of just web development, not only for the people out there, but also for me, because this actually helps me. It helps me being able to just speak code and just be technical about it. It'll only just make me that much better of a programmer. And I also want to help the people out there because there, I know there's a lot of people like me who for instance, athletes who don't know what they want to do, really don't have any experience in any other things but playing ball. And this is a it's, it's a cool thing to pick up. Anybody can do it. If I can do it, you can too. All you need is a computer and an internet connection and you can conquer the world, honestly. So right here we have JS Ben. JS Ben is a, and you can, if you want to, you can follow along with me. Go to jsben.com and you can follow along. This is a browser that is a code editor and it's very 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 powerful there's HTML, html css javascript there's the console and then you have the output which displays the html and it's a very it's a very very cool website this is actually what i started on when i started my journey there's actually a video on my youtube page of how i started it and what i was doing so yeah let's uh let's cut straight to it so let's start off by talking about what html is so HTML, this stands for Hypertext Markup Language. And HTML is the standard markup language for documents designed to be displayed in a web browser. So it's pretty much just the skeleton of a website. It can be assisted by technologies such as CSS, which is cascading style sheets, and scripting languages such as JavaScript. We're not gonna go into those, but in the future, maybe. But right now, I just want to keep it super, super, super simple for someone who hasn't touched a line of code in their life. And then today, we're going to be learning about heading tags, paragraph tags, link tags or anchor tags, image tags, and in input tags. So for the first thing we have is, um, you don't really have to know too much about this or what they do, but this is a, the, the first thing you're going to have in an HTML file is a doc type HTML tag. And this goes at the top. If I were to make an index.html file, there's snippets, there's shortcuts, so you don't have to memorize all of this stuff. The next thing you're gonna have is the HTML tags. And this HTML tag is, it has the open tag, which is this, and then the closing tag, which is the open bracket forward slash HTML. That's how you close the tag off. And everything in the website is put between these two tags. So you have the head tags, which consist of all of these right here. And then you have the body tags, which consist of the content of the website. So for the head, let's go to the head tag. So between these two head tags, you see the, the opening tag and the closing tag. You have these meta tags, which we're not going to go into. You don't need to know what that is, but you do need to know what this is. This is a title tag. So what this title tag is, is anything that's between these two tags is the title of the, of the web page. So if we want to, for instance, so if I, it's not gonna do this, so this is gonna be a bad example. If I were to change this to my website, you wouldn't see it because it's in the browser, my website. So if I were, if I were working on an HTML file and I change this, the title of the tab up here would be changed to whatever this was. So for example, on my website, this is this is the text that's between those two those two tags, the opening tag and closing tag. It's my name. It's between these two tags in the head head tags. 
just so you know. Okay. Next, we have the body tags. And like I said earlier, the body tags consist of everything that's in the website. So your heading tags, your paragraph tags, your anchor tags, your image tags, your input tags, whatever, any element that you have in the web page is put between these two body tags. And this is what comes out in the output on the screen. So for the first one, we're going to talk about the heading tags and the heading tags are, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's the heading tags of, if you want to have a heading tag of my website, you will put it between a heading tag. And there are six heading tags. There's one through six and one being the biggest, six being the smallest. To put out a heading tag, we're going to put H1, open tag, H1, closing tag, or closing bracket, open bracket, H1, or sorry, open tag, forward slash, H1, closing tag. And then whatever you want to put, so heading, put H1 tag. And as you see it, it comes out in the output. So if you want to keep expanding on that, we have the H2. I'm going to do my shortcuts for it. So I don't take up a lot of time. As you can see, we have tags one through six with one being the biggest, six being the smallest. And with these tags, like I said earlier, this is pretty much if you want to have a, a tag that says, welcome to my website, you will put it on a, in an H1 tag. But you only want to have one H1 tag. You don't want to just have a bunch of H1 tags because the size of it. You can use a, a P tag and and write CSS for the font size and, and whatnot. That's, a, that's something that you should keep in mind. So we have the six tags right there, H1 tag, H2 tag, H3 tag, H4 tag, H5 tag, H6 tag. And you can see they get smaller, 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 and smaller. For the next tag, you're, gonna, you're going to have the P tag. And the P tag is this. There's opening tag, closing tag. As you can see, open bracket P, closing bracket, open bracket, forward slash P, closing bracket. And between this tag is whatever text that you want to have on your website. If you have a paragraph, if you have a, an article or something, the footer, you would put text between these two tags. Let me put this is a paragraph tag. As you can see, that's the default styling for it. It's just regular text on the screen. So for the next one, we have an anchor tag, a link tag. This is probably one of my favorite, one of my favorite tags when I'm starting out. Cause the cool thing about this is, boom, so we have a, the A tag. And as you can see, it has an href. And this is called an attribute. And what this attribute does is say, this is the source of the website that you want to take the user to on the click. So if I wanted the, the user to go to my website, I will put the URL of my website in between these two quotes in this href attribute. So let's do HTTPS colon forward slash just ov.com. And then between the tags is the text that you want the, the user to see. So I can put link to my website right here in text. But there's a little catch thing that you got to be mindful about. If I were just to click, I don't want to do it right now, but if I were to click on this, it would break the app and I don't want to do that. But if I were to, if, if I were to click on this, this link would take me directly to that website on this in this tab and you don't want that you don't want the user to be clicking off of your web page at any time so what you want to do to combat that is after this href you want to put another attribute which is called target equals attributes always go in between quotes so with this you want to put underscore blank and what the underscore blank does is it takes the user to a different tab. So the user doesn't have to click the backspace and 
you know how annoying that is when you're on a website and it takes it to a different page on that specific tab and you're like ah you just don't want to go back so what this does is it takes you it takes you to a different tab with the website so for example let's click it exit out of that and if I click it this should open up my website in a different tab there we go so the user can go to a different website and then just click back on that tab and go back to your website by the way check my website out <laughs> this is literally it was kind of dark in here but this is literally my first ever website it's actually terrible but the reason I haven't changed it is because I it, it literally tells me like the progress I've made from when I was starting out to where I am now and it's it's just a little like just remember where you started at I mean it's not that bad but <laughs> it's just a little reminder y'all go check it out though you can uh, subscribe to my newsletter and get emails from me uh, my story about how I Went from an athlete to a software engineer. My links up here, Instagram, LinkedIn, GitHub, Medium, Blog, little football highlights and whatnot. But yeah, y'all go check it out. Let me know what you think. So for the next tag we're going to learn about is the image tag. Before I start, the thing about the image tag is the image tag is not like the other tags where there's an opening tag and a closing tag. The image tag is one of those tags where it's a self-closing tag. And what a self-closing tag is, is a self-closing tag. <laughs> but what you're gonna do is, for a self-closing tag, you're gonna have the open bracket, IMG, forward slash, closing bracket. And similar to the A anchor tag, you're going to have attributes that you can put on it. And what the main, the default, or what the, the main attribute is for an image tag is the source attribute, the SRC. And between these two tags, or sorry, between these two quotes, you're going to put what the, the source to the file of the image that you wanna display on the web page. So the image we're going to put on our web page is an image of a, a cute dog. <laughs> So we're going to open link and open image a new tab. Grab the URL, copy it, and we're going to paste it. And there we go. We have an image of a dog. Boom. And then as well as the source, you also want to have the alt attribute. ALT quotes and what this all attribute does is this is for screen readers if your web page can't display the image it's going to read out or display the text that is between this alt attribute so if I were to have this image on my web page I will put cute dog for the alt attribute and if this for whatever reason couldn't fetch to the web page can display it would say cute dog. For the next one and last tag we're going to learn about today is the input tag. And similar to the image tab, the input tag is a self-closing tag. It's another cool tag. There's so many things you can do with it. So we're gonna start off by doing the open, open bracket, put input, forward slash, closing bracket, and then for the input, the attribute that this one takes in is called a type. And the default one would be text. So what do you think text does? Text is self-explanatory, it's text. You can put whatever you want to in the, uh, in the input. And if you wanna, I encourage you to, to whatever I'm talking about, I encourage you to go out there and, and, and learn more about it. There's a website called W3Schools, and this will tell you everything and anything you need to learn about HTML. If you wanna go to CSS, JavaScript, things like that, this website will teach you. There's a whole lot of different types. There's buttons, button types, checkboxes, colors, date, emails, files, numbers, passwords, radio, inputs, submit, for forms, there's dates, there's all types of types that you can put in, or you can uh, you can put in the type attribute, which is cool. So 
text is the first one we're going to talk about and that's if you want the user to write whatever text and later on you'll learn about javascript where you can kind of make it a controlled state where you can put whatever the user types into that input and store that into a value and then later do whatever you want to with it you can update something on the page you can do whatever you want with javascript and that's later on down the line but it's pretty cool what you can do with it so we have text for the first type and then for the next one we have that we're going to talk about is the password type and then for this one this is cool or whenever you type in this input it's a password so you can't see it so this is what you're going to see on any type of sign up forms um, your banking websites if you have to put something in that's a, a secret password or anything like that the, the input type on or the type on that input is a password type so yeah there we go our first ever page i encourage you to go out there and and expand on this create a, a website um, whenever you whenever you finish it email it to me send me a message linkedin instagram whatever you may want to do and just let me know let me see what what you put out there i want to continue doing this it helps me get better at just talking code anything code i love it i i'm, I'm in love with it I, I'm, I'm passionate about it it's fulfilling to me i love when i do something i build a feature and i'm able to look wow i did that and it can help people out in the future and, and whatnot but it's a beautiful thing i encourage everybody you don't have to become a developer but i encourage everybody to to at least try and just understand what the internet is this is what everything is everything is on the internet so being able to program and tell a computer what you want it to do is super super valuable it teaches you so many lessons it forces you to think outside the box and it's it's an amazing thing but thank you guys for watching the video uh hopefully if you're an athlete, you don't know what to do, tap in. All you need is a computer, a laptop, internet connection, you can conquer the world.